Aliyah Tapuria knocks out Alexander Volkanovsky in fashion. We all knew Aliyah Tapuria has that knockout power, but to do it to the featherweight goat, Alexander Volkanovsky was just wow, and it was just a magical moment for Aliyah Tapuria and his family. I do a breakdown of the fight and do a recap of the whole card at UFC 298. Let's get right into it. Hey guys, welcome to the Foss Nine Podcast here with episode 197. This is your host, Alvero. Hey guys, let's talk about UFC 298. What a fucking weekend it was for UFC. And just for the whole community, uh, you know, a big, big deal what happened. You know, Leah knocking out Volkanovski was fucking epic. And it was like, holy crap. So pretty big deal. I do want to just start off by saying real quick, um, I do kind of apologize for the last episode for being so long. Um, I, I thought about it and I was just like, man, you know, I've been, you know, giving you guys 20, 25 minute podcast episodes and then I give you kind of double of that. So I just want to apologize for that. Cause I feel like, you know, you guys probably didn't want to watch that or there was just no interest in committing to 55 minutes or 50 minutes. So just want to apologize for that, but there's good content in there. Um, this one's going to be no more than 25 minutes. I promise. Um, if not just 30. So, we're going to get, uh, well, let's talk about something real quick. So, I clearly had um, Volkanovski winning this fight towards the end in a decision or something like that. And, uh, you know, I put out my predictions on the internet, on the social medias, whatever. And I got kind of not, not necessarily trolled, but, you know, people are like, oh, what now, what now? The title of the, the last episode was that Volkanovski is going to humble Leah on the Clips channel. It was like something along the same lines. So, very vocal, very confident that, you know, Volkanovski was going to win the fight. But, you know, when I'm wrong like that, guys, uh, you know, and this is for the people that kind of hate. And also to the, you know, if I'm wrong, like the people that do watch, like I was wrong um, to an extent, right? I did also mention, you know, in that same clip or the same podcast, like the only hope that Aliyah has is by knocking out Volkanovski in the first or second round. Because the longer this fight goes, the harder it's going to get for him. So, like, when I'm wrong, I feel like people kind of get this excitement, you know? And it's kind of weird to see in the comments, like, ha you're wrong, or this age like milk. Or, or like, it, it just seems like they're just so happy that I was wrong. Or, like, they're happy that someone on social media just got, like, exposed. I don't know what it is, man. It's a pretty weird thing, though. Um, Like, what, what, like I don't know why that's so satisfying to other people that I was wrong. So, it's, I just want to say that it's kind of weird. But also, like, you know, I was... I was wrong, but I also knew the possibility of Aaliyah doing it. Like, it was very likely to happen. Um, didn't think it was going to happen, but it was likely, and it happened. So, it is what it is. Um, Let's see. Let's see. So, let's get right into it, man. Uh, the first fight uh, was at Anthony. I think it was Anthony Hernandez and, and Kopilov or Kopilov. A uh, very good one for Hernandez. Uh, nice choke. It was pretty, uh, you could say, with style. You know, he was looking at the camera, just like nodding, like I got it, I got it, and so that was pretty dope. Um, nothing much there to say. Good, the good W. Um, but let's get started with Marab and Henry Cejudo. I had Henry winning this fight. I picked Henry to win. I just thought the experience was going to be there, and his placement, and, and just knowing where to be in the octagon was going to be, you know, more than enough to be Marab. Think about Marab. He is a fucking maniac. He will keep coming at you, coming at you. And he got, what, five takedowns in that fight, which to do against an Olympic gold medalist was fucking crazy. Uh, so just impressive that he could do that um, to someone like Henry. And and I don't know if you could say he figured out Henry because I thought, you know, Marab was going to have to do some figuring out. But he kind of just put he had a good game plan and they put it together and he just put it on Henry like right off the gate. So it was impressive. It was fucking impressive. Uh, you know, Henry caught Marab in the first, which was fucking nice. And Marab just recovered so nice. And, and just it was his fight from there. Henry looked tired at the end of that third fight or third round. Um, you know, coming off, you know, you're constantly fighting five rounds. You know, you've had that long layout for three years. So it just goes to show you the shape of Marab. I know there's people that say that Henry was also hurt, so who knows what was really going on. But Marab, a really, really good win. He was so impressive. He's so fucking crazy. Like, he is just nonstop coming at you. And he has some hands. His takedowns are crazy. So the best I've seen of Marab. You know, when it beat uh, Peter Yan, I was like, damn, this is nice. But, you know, what he did to Henry and what he did to uh, Peter Yan, it's like, man, this guy is fucking 
good. And uh, hopefully he gets his title shot. You know, the winner of Cheeto and Sugar. It makes sense. Why not? You know, this guy's on a 10 win fight streak. Murad deserves a title shot. I don't care what happens. You know, if Sugar loses Cheeto versus Murad, you know, you're up 2-0 against Sugar. I understand, but you haven't even defended your title once, Sugar Sean O'Malley. So let's fucking move on. Like, you lost your title. It is what it is. So whoever wins out of Sugar Cheeto, Sugar versus Cheeto, needs to fight Murab. Murab deserves his title shot. You know, he was holding it down because Aljamain Sterling was champion and didn't want a title shot because that's his buddy, respectfully. And, you know, Murab's just knocking them all down, just beating all of them. So I really hope they give his title shot. Um, I know Sugar was talking about how he goes and beats Cheeto in the Aaliyah fights. They're like, no, bro, Sugar, stay in your fucking division and fight fucking Murab. And, you know, that would be a amazing clash. So, uh, yeah, Murab deserves his title shot. He, he fair and square deserves it. So, kudos for Murab. And for Henry Cejudo, man, like, I mean, where do you go from here? Like, I mean, for me, for Henry, it's just time to walk away. You know, two losses against two of the best guys in the division, and you lose in decision on both of them. I mean, you're just kind of not necessarily done, but it's just better to walk away. It's just better to walk away. And uh, you tried, you know, props to you for trying. You left in a really, really, really good way. And uh, you try to come back and and just just walk away, man. Like, you did so good. And it doesn't take anything away from Henry Cejudo and the fighter who he is. He accomplished so much in his sport and has done so much. So, you know, I want to remember Henry Cejudo like that. He tried to come back and got a title fight and then a number one contender fight. So, didn't get those. I don't think that he there's anything else he needs to do in the UFC. Um, he already accomplished what he did, and I just don't see him coming back and getting any title shot. You know, he had two really good chances, one of them being the title fight. Um, so I think it's time for him to just, you know, retire. And I thought it was pretty neat that Dana White didn't give him that moment again because he said Henry Cejudo already retired. Um, this is Marab's night, da 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 da, which I think is fucking awesome. And 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 it's respectful to Marab, and it's all about Marab. And it's true, Henry Cejudo had his moment. He already retired, so it is what it is, man. So I'm happy for Marab. Again, deserves his title shot. Henry Cejudo needs to think about just walking away completely. All right, let's move on to Ian Gary and uh, Geoff Neal. Very fucking boring fight, unfortunately. Um, very disappointed with Ian Gary, to be honest with you. I wanted him to go out there and make a statement and just fucking shut everybody up. But he did the opposite. He fucking ran his ass off that whole fight and was just touching and moving, touching and moving. And and for him in the post-conference to be like, did you look at me? I, I He couldn't touch me. Da, 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 motherfucker, you didn't do shit, though. Like, you went out there and just ran your ass off and just touched and go. And, and, and you're number 10, and, and I think, what, Neil's number 7 or 8? That's a guy you should have just blew out the waters if you wanted to be top 5, bro. And so I was really upset, disappointed, and, and just like, man, I thought you was you was really finna put on a show. He had a lot of motive. He, had, he hasn't been as active. I know he was fighting pneumonia, but you had enough, more than enough time to rest. There was, a, I mean, a lot of things in his favor, and, and that's what he kind of delivers, so... It's it's very disappointing, you know. Like I said, he had a he had a lot of things for him, right to have a really good and big moment, and to you know give himself more stock as a fighter to start him as well. Like, could you imagine he go puts on a show, knocks his guy out, or just pieces him up an exciting fight, and just starts going off, and it's just like hell yeah, like just going off, but no. He fucking ran away and da da da, and he's over here bragging about the fight, how good he did and how nice he looked. I'm like, bro, there was nothing exciting about that fight. It was the boringest fight on the card, boringest fight on the card. So, you know, for me, Ian Gary stock goes down. Uh, I, I he called out Kobe Covington. I hope that fight happens because I think Kobe beats him. To be honest with you, and it would just be kind of funny to see Kobe Covington just go in on Ian Gary. It would be fucking entertaining, and that fight should happen. And it will happen because it'll sell you a shit ton of pay-per-views. Let it be a co-main or something. Um, It'll be fun. It'll be very fucking fun. Uh, so, you know, very disappointing, Ian Gary. Boring fights, news fest. Um, 
you know, if he can beat Kobe Covington, I'm excited again. But in the meantime, just like, eh, bro, just you, you be yapping, you be crying. And I thought you were, you had that dog in you, but I mean, you did what you did. So it is what it is. Um, all right. Paulo Costa versus Robert Whitaker. To me, this was fight of the night. Uh, it was my favorite fight on the card, to be honest with you, besides the, the main event, right? I always exclude the main event from these things because the main event most of the time doesn't ever disappoint. Uh, what do we have? So we have Paulo Costa versus Robert Whitaker. And that, yeah, like I said, that fight to me was fight of the night, the most exciting fight. Um, very high pace and fucking landing, landing heavy punches, big swings, big punches, big kicks, uh, good moments. It had everything. The fight was good. Um, and Robert Whitaker looked nice. I was so happy to see Paulo Costa back in there. Uh, I don't like, I'm not a fan of Paulo Costa, but he's just a fun fighter to watch. And I want him to be active and I want to watch him. He's fucking fun. He's entertaining. Look what he just did against Robert. Him and Rock Hold was a good fight. Like he's just entertaining. So I like seeing him fight because I mean, look what he did to Robert Lana, that crazy spinning uh, heel kick. It was insane and it was hype. So like, I want to see Paulo Costa active. I want to see him fighting. He's good. He's really good. And, and who knows, you know, if he gets a little moment and a lot of things go right, he can find himself into a title shot. And for Robert Whitaker to, to bounce back from that and basically be a step ahead, you know, kind of controlling the fight, Robert Whitaker looked nice. He looked really, really good. And uh, I haven't seen Robert Whitaker like do just so good in, in a while like that. Uh, I was just impressed, you know. And it's just very impressive that you come off a fucking knockout TKO loss to Drake is the current champion. And you bounce back. You bounce back and you bounce back in fashion. You face adversity with that fucking heel kick. And, and you win a nice decision. Like it was impressive by uh, Robert Whitaker to do that. And it's exciting because he's back in the, in the conversation for, uh, you know, top contender. You know, whether it's Knicks, you know, you can run Drakus and Robert Whitaker again. That could sell you fights. Uh, you can do Robert Whitaker and Jared. Robert Whitaker and Sean Strickland is fucking fire. Robert Whitaker and Hamzak. Like, you can make some really good fighter fights with Robert Whitaker, you know. And if he went and gets another win, I don't see why he doesn't get the title shot. Um, and even now, he could get a title shot. I can see that happening, too. So, big win for uh, Robert Whitaker. And I'm happy to see someone, you know, coming off a, a tough loss and bounce back like that. Uh, but it's it's just nice to see, man. It's really it's really nice and and it's cool. And I'm happy for Robert Whitaker, and I want to see him back and you know give it one last fucking go, and see what he can uh, put out and and just deliver on. So, really good fight, man. Really good fight. Uh, so let's talk about the main event. Thoughts and feelings first, man. I was uh, nervous as fuck in this fight. Uh, I was very calm though, like leading up to it. Usually, I'm real nervous that like when the the night starts and we're watching the fights and just you know seeing the previews constantly i'm like fuck this is scary you know whatever but i was pretty calm and and i was just i kept telling you know zach and my girl i was like i'm just so calm because volkanovsky should win this fight and he and if he doesn't then his time is up like it's it is what it is it's Aliyah's time and and that's it like you know that and i just knew you know, Volkanovski, as a certain age, I thought he still had it. I was really confident. I was really confident he was going to do it. And, but I was just like, you know, this guy's young. We've seen this story so many fucking times with this young guy. Just comes out and puts on a show and, and it's just his fucking moment. Like, it's just his moment. Like, it was, everything was perfect for Aliyah. He marketed this fight about his confidence and how he was going to just KO Volkanovski and you know kind of arrogant in a way as well with just the confidence so he he set it up perfectly man and you know he put himself to have this magical moment and he did and and I was okay with that because usually I'm like nah like when Charles and Israel fought like no Israel, Charles is gonna win Charles is gonna win like you know and if he would have lost it would have been devastated the first time I was devastated but this one I was like man it could happen it could fucking happen and uh I was I was pretty calm, like I said, and and just like you know, and but we were watching the first and and part of the second, I was like, okay, Volk's calm, and uh, I saw a lot of good things that Volk was doing, and I was like, this fine, this fight's going to go to decision, 
and he's just going to win. Like, it's fine. And clearly, that didn't happen. Gets the fucking knockout, and I'm just like, holy moly. Just fucking folded, man. So, those are my thoughts and feelings first, right? Let's talk about the fight now. Um, I mean, like I said, Volkanovski came out there, and, <clears throat> you know, Aliyah was very patient and uh, he had his few moments in the first and then, you know, early in the second, but I thought Volkanovski was doing really well. I mean, look at Aliyah Tapuria's face. He was touched up. Volkanovski didn't even look like he had a fight. No scratches, no damage to the face. He looked, he has a clean face, man. That's just how hard he got knocked the fuck out. But you look at Aliyah Tapuria's face and he, you know, he has a little bumps, red, you know, he got pieced up a little bit. And uh, like I said, Volkanovski was doing really well. And I was like, you know, towards the end of that fucking second round, I was like, okay, like, it's going to be Volk's time now. He's about to start cooking. I just, that's all. I was like, okay, bet. Like, the show's about to start. Volk's about to just take over. He's comfortable. He figured out the range thing. Um, he he kind of knows how the combinations are coming in. And uh, I just felt real confident, and he was looking real good. And, I mean, Aaliyah was fucking patient, man. And, uh I mean, his IQ ha- is, has to be up there, you know, to know where to be and, and when to initiate that exchange and to throw the combinations at the right time. And he was landing really good shots before that in the first and second. So, you know, he was finding the distance, finding the range. And, I mean, eventually he got close enough to just lights out, you know. And, and we all knew it, you know. This is like a fighter like Alex Pereira. He puts you on that fence. He is letting it go. So, um, you know, I, I really can't say nothing much but that. Like, I was just impressed by Aaliyah. Like, I was just like, wow, this guy's good, right? And Volkanovski, I was just like, man, you were doing so good. You know, I don't know if you made a small mistake. I don't know if that, the calf kicks got to him. Um, But, you know, besides the fact that he got caught, at, like, I just feel like uh, Volkanovski could have done something better there to not let it get there or, um, you know, just – maybe counter something or get out of there quicker or go for a clinch, go for a takedown. I just feel like there's something that he could have done better, um, to be honest with you. It wasn't like Volk to just see him get get backed up like that and uh, kind of get caught that way. Usually if he knows he's in danger, he knows how to get out of that real quick. Um, so I, I was a little surprised by that the decisions that kind of led up to that, you know, but not taking anything from, from Aliyah Tapuria. He did real well. So... Um, and one thing about the fight, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but there was a moment in the fight where Volkanovski catches Tapuria with a nice, uh, left, left shot. And he tells something to, to Tapuria. And then Tapuria says, I'm coming, I'm coming. Wait, you know, and around later he fucking came and put him out. So I thought that was pretty badass to be honest with you that he, he did that. Like, you know, he, he knew he was patient. He knew his fight, his game plan was, and it was going, uh, according to plan, you know, to have that confidence, it just, for me, when I saw that today, rewatching the fight, I was like, for Aaliyah to say, I'm coming, I'm coming, like, I'm like, bro, this guy, the fight was going in a way where he wanted it to go, right? Obviously, he didn't think about getting caught as many as times, I'm sure, but he knew he was going to have his moment, and, and that's all he needed. He just needed one fucking moment, and he took it, and he got it done, so... Pretty badass, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, what was I going to say, man? Fuck. But, you know, post-fight, uh, not even, yeah, post-fight, he talks about how he didn't expect Volkanovski's speed and things like that. So, um, I mean, guys, like, is a really good guy, and I think, you know, he still has it uh, to an extent. And, uh, you know, he was, like I said, he was fighting just a good fight, man. It was a good fight. So, um, I know my girl and Zach were pretty upset, but I was just like, man, like, you know, it sucks that Volkanovski had to lose, but for Tapuria, like, you know, his come up and, you know, to be undefeated, not fight anybody in the top 10, I mean, not top five, I, I, I mean, and uh, to, you know, just, you're fighting the featherweight GOAT, one of the best ever. At one point, he was pound for pound last year, uh, he was pound for pound, he was top of the world, and, and to me, one of the best fighters ever to exist you know Volkanovs is just going to go down one is the best no matter what happened his last three fights uh to me he's just one of the best so 
to go and do that to him and, and knock him out, just lights out. It's fucking crazy. And I was like, bro, that's fucking badass. I'm so happy for you, bro. Like, like that's just a magical fucking moment. Imagine how many times Aaliyah Tapuri has been thinking about that fucking moment. Being champion and new. Like, ah, oh, like it has to be fucking awesome, man. And the reaction to Aaliyah Tapuri when he knocked out Volkanovski, he grabs his head, looks at his brother, and he's like, what the fuck? I'm just like, that's fucking cool. Like, it, it's awesome, bro. And and then and it sucks because it had to be Volkanovski and, and, and it hurt me. Like I was like, fuck. But um that that's sports. Like in general. Like that is just sports, bro. Like it happens and it sucks. So um you know, let's talk about I guess a little bit after the fight. Uh Aliyah Tapuria, you know, they start asking him what's next, things like that, and he's kind of just like, Oh, like nobody's good enough, the division sucks, which is kind of weird to say. Because, you know, you just became champion. You should be ready to fucking be like, man, let me, you know, let me have the winner of this fight or so-and-so's fighting next. Like, we'll see what happens. But not really giving an indication on what's next, you know. He calls out Conor McGregor. I'm like, bro, I get why people call out Conor. It's a money fight, but let's be fucking realistic, man. Like, fight people that are going to give you a legacy name. Conor McGregor became Conor McGregor because, obviously, the style and fashion, but... The knockouts, the names, things like that. Like, he took advantage of the moments that came to him. And, and for Aaliyah, like, fight these guys, man. Fight Max. Fight Yair. Fight Brian Ortega. Um, that one guy that he was talking about that's boring, that has just the decisions. Uh, I mean, Allen. Or was it Arnold and Allen, if I'm not mistaken? Like, there's a there's a lot of good fighters in that division. Aljamain Sterling's in there. There's a lot of good guys. Like, bro, you can make a good fucking run and go after that and call those guys out. Let them know. Put them on notice. Don't fucking talk about Conor McGregor, you know? Like, and, and to talk about the rematch saying that the division needs to move on is like, okay, you're not calling anyone out and you're you're saying the division needs to move on. Who the fuck you going to fight then, Aaliyah Tapuria? You can't just be champ and, and not fight nobody. That's not how it works. So, um, I think, you know, he could have done better on that part, you know, calling someone out or, or whatever. But he indicated, and it, it looked like it was most obvious what's going to happen next, which is the rematch against Aaliyah. He said, well, I mean, the rematch against Volkanovski. He said, well, if it can happen in Spain, then let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, right? So I think that's what's going to happen next. I think Aaliyah is going to have a a fun time as champion, Volkanovski. And this does happen when a champion becomes champion. Usually, they're not fighting until eight months later, uh, eight to ten months. Like, that's just how it happens. It's kind of like a privilege thing, I think, I would think. I think I would think. So that's what it seems like, at least. And it makes sense. You just became champion. Fucking, <clears throat> you know, enjoy it as much as you can. So uh, that was a bit annoying from Aaliyah Tapuria. But uh, he's try you could tell when Aaliyah's playing this role of, like, you know, this heel type of character. And then when he's genuine. So it's pretty funny to see. But I'm like, bro, just fucking call people out, bro. Fucking be crazy. Call out everybody. Everybody can get it. Let's fucking go. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and for Volkanovski, you know, there's a lot of things that you got to ask yourself, you know, are, are like, did he come back too early from that knockout from Islam Makachev? Was it too soon? I think so. Um, you know, do you want to go back and, and fight Aliyah Tapuria in Spain later this year? Do you just want to fight another guy? Or, or do you just want to sit off for a year, like not come back till next January, next fe- like till a, literally a year from now? Um, so there's a lot of questions that need to be asked for Volkanovski. I think the best thing he can do is like not fight for eight months, you know, wait till November, December, honestly, don't fucking fight in the summer. You like take six to eight months, minimum, minimum, bro. Like you got to take some time off. You got to recover like completely. I was saying this, you know, he was probably concussed after the head kick against Makachev. He got hit hard by leg, a crazy kick. Right on the dome, on the top of the head, too, man. Like, at least this one, he was on the chin. I feel like it's less damaging. I'm pretty sure you still rattle your brain up a little bit. But he got concussed as fuck against Islam Makachev. Like, just completely. So, uh, I don't think he was fully recovered from yet. Like, think about it. If he got concussed, he, you don't get cleared from minor concussions in high school till like, two, three weeks sometimes, you know. And, and that's somewhat of a month. And then you still got to recover from that. So hey, you got to ask yourself how healthy Volkanovski was. I don't think he was his healthiest. So 
I mean, I don't know, man. It, it kind of sucks, to be honest with you, that he came back so soon. It kind of sucks that he fought Islam Makachev. He should have never done that. But, you know, we can't go back in time and, and change that. So it is what it is. I think Volkanovski just needs to take some time off and then fight Aliyah Tapuria, you know, in November, December. I don't want to fight, or maybe even October, but, you know, no earlier than October. Just fucking take some time off. Recover, 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 recover. Just fucking focus on recovering and, and just get healthy, you know, and then make a decision. Like, just make a decision on what you want to do. Um, Israel Adesanya is sitting out. I know he's sitting out because he just wants some time off. He's just trying to recover, man. Um, I know Volkanovski is a little bit older, but, you know, it, it's okay. Like, he's done so much. I know he wants to do more, but if he, if Volkanovski thinks about coming back, he just needs to take that break. I was like, if you're going to come back and become champion one more time, you have to. You just have to take some time off. Like, you have to. And even if he just beats Aaliyah Tapuria and then walks away, like, that's fucking cool. It is what it is. But, you know, he definitely needs to just be careful and, and just take care of himself and, and just think about how he wants to, you know, finish his time at the UFC because, you know, we probably don't have no more than three years for, for Volkanovski in the UFC. So that's that, guys. But, yeah, that that's UFC 298, man. It was pretty awesome. Uh, UFC 297 was pretty fucking dead. Dana White even apologized for that. Um, but, yeah, 298 was awesome. So it's awesome that we just finally have some fights again that, you know, content, you could say, and things to get excited about. So that was UFC 298, you know, really, really good card, really fun fight, except for fucking Ian Gary. Um, but the rest of the card was nice. It was fun. It was exciting. And I mean, it's it's where Aaliyah Tapuria became a champion and how we'll see what his title reign is and what it will be. And, um, you know, people are talking that he could be three time uh, champ, three three division champ, things like that. So I don't want to talk about that too much because, you know, I kind of make a different video for that. And also, too, like, you know, he needs to focus on his division and, and just be great, right? We all love Volkanovski because of the people that he beat in his division, and then he decided to move up. So, yeah. Lastly, guys, before we wrap up, uh, it looks like a 30-minute video. Uh, 300, UFC 300 is finally, finally put together, and the main event is going to be Jamal Hill versus Alex Pereira for the light heavyweight title. Um. You know, I think they could have probably made, I don't know, man. I don't know what the options were. I was a little kind of disappointed with this one being the main event, you know, being Jamal Hill and Alex. I'm just like, ah, you know, I wanted to see, I wanted to have like an aura. I wanted to have some nostalgic, nostalgic effect when I, and you know, whether it was Israel Adesanya or, you know, Kam not Kamar Usman, but like Kamar Usman, maybe Leon Edwards or like Ko uh, Hamzak. And Leon, um, who I mean, Islam and Maka, Islam, even in there, possibly Khabib, Connor, like Nate, Nate uh, I know those, not necessarily the main event, but Coleman even. Um, and I know, like, I'm saying a lot of different names are not as active or things like that, even Volkanovski, but like, I just feel like they could have done but a little bit better, you know. I'm not trying to take anything from Alex and Jamal Hill, but it's just not the most. The fans from both sides are not, there's not a lot, right? You know, it, I mean, Alice Pereira and Jamal Hill's fans put together are probably not near as Volkanovski as like just his fans or Sugar Sean's fans, things like that. So the pool, you know, it's not as exciting. The, the main event, the coming are not as exciting, if I'm being honest with you guys. But the rest of the card is fucking, you know, stacked, right? We So Alice Pereira versus Jamal Hill. Zhang Whaley versus Jan, I'm not gonna say the last name. Then you have Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway, Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarukian, Yuri Prozarka versus Alexander Rakic, Calvin Cater versus Algernon Sterling, Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage, which I think that's the first on the, the main card and the prelims, if I'm not mistaken. Or I don't even know, man. But anyways, Davidson Figueredo versus Cody, Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison, and then you have so Dick Yosef versus Diego Lopez, which is a banger. Jessica Andrade, which is she's always exciting, versus Marina Rodriguez, and then Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Really, really stacked card itself. Like I said, just the co-main, 
and the main event is not the most exciting to me, but I'm happy with the news, man, and I'm happy for UFC 300. It's going to be hype. It's going to be exciting. A lot of things are going to unfold after that card, even with just 299 and 300. It just opens up the rest of the year and the rest of the UFC in these divisions for amazing fucking fights. So the outcomes of those two cards are going to be awesome, and it's going to kind of structure what the next few months and the next few pay-per-views are going to be so it's very fun and very exciting um and i'm looking forward to it i know a lot of people shit on it but i'm just like bro ufc 300 is not it's supposed to be one of the biggest cards of the year yes but it's not supposed to be the biggest card ever like what makes a card so fucking awesome is when you have magical moments brandon moreno moment leon edwards moment uh, who else? Who else? When Juliana Pena beat Amanda Nunez moment, like uh, Drake is Duplessis. I mean, Sean Strickland beating Israel Adesanya moment. Like those type of moments is what make a card so fucking good. When you have fights just back to back that are fucking wars and brutal, then you're just like, I can't take no more. Your heart rate's out the roof. That's what makes a card so stacked and just so good you know obviously the names but the fights have to be fucking good right so i'm looking forward to it and i think each of these fights are going to be fucking crazy like from you know when ufc 300 starts it's going to be fucking amazing and pure entertainment and pure fucking wars for hours that night so i'm very excited it's gonna be very fun um, and if you shit on the car, like, fuck you, man. Like, to be honest with you, it's a good card. And it's a big deal for the UFC. Like, to have 300 pay-per-view events, like, that has to be fucking awesome for a company. So, kudos for the UFC, Dana White, Hunter, all those guys over there. I mean, good job. Like, you know, you're putting on the UFC, and the UFC has came a long fucking way. So, it's a big milestone, and, and we need to appreciate it more of that way. Not, like, for entertainment purposes. It's just like, bro, entertainment purposes, yes, but... I mean, the sport's here to stay. The UFC's here to stay, and we're going to just keep having more pay-per-view events. So very cool, very awesome. And, guys, that's the end of the episode. Hopefully not as long. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you thought about UFC 298, and let me know what is next for these fighters. See you guys on the next one. Peace.